So now let's have a look at layer two, which is the link layer or the data link layer. The main job of layer two is to organize that stream of ones and zeros into frames, into useful units of information. And the way that layer two normally does that is by having a special pattern of ones and zeros that marks the start and the end of the frame. This is a pattern which either cannot occur in the middle of a frame or is very unlikely to occur in the middle of a frame. So that as the stream comes in, it, the receiver can see where a frame starts and where a frame ends. That's the fundamental thing that layer two does. Now, there are additional things that layer two can do, depending on what networks technology you're using. So some layer twos will detect transmission errors. So they will detect whether a frame has been corrupted or not. I'll show some examples of that in a moment. Some layer twos may support the idea of a shared medium. So that is, for example, multiple devices on the same medium, which could be uh, multiple devices on the same ethernet or multiple devices on a wireless network. Now, if you're gonna be sending data between multiple devices, you need some way of identifying which device should receive each frame. So layer two can have its own addressing system. So if you can identify where a frame is supposed to go, that's unicast for meaning one destination, or you may have a special address called a multicast or broadcast, which means that this frame needs to go to multiple destinations or, or all of the destinations on your network. Layer two may also have some mechanism for doing access control. In other words, taking turns as who can use the medium and collision detection, which is making sure that we can recover if two devices try to transmit at the same time. Again, this was something that was used with hubs, but nowadays the most important application for this is in wireless networks, where it's important where the devices can take it in turns to transmit. And usually layer two will also carry some information about what layer three protocol is being used. And that allows you to mix multiple layer three protocols on the same network. All right, so let's have a look at some examples of layer two. So the first example I'm going to show you is PPP, the point to point protocol. This used to be widely used in dial up networks, but is now still very, very commonly used in broadband access networks like DSL networks. So your data is encapsulated inside PPP frames and that PPP is your layer two protocol. So your frame of layer two PPP looks like this. There's a flag which marks the start of the frame, special pattern of bits. There's a field that contains the protocol, which is what layer three information is being carried. Then there's an information field that's the actual data that you want to carry. Then there is a CRC, a cyclic redundancy check, which is used to detect transmission errors, and then a flag at the end to indicate the end of the frame. So the, the CRC, the cyclic redundancy check, is a pattern of bits which is calculated across the whole frame. So the transmitter calculates that pattern and puts it into the, into the frame, sends the frame, the receiver does the same calculation and sees if they get the same CRC result. Now, if they get a different CRC, it means that the data must have been corrupted somehow on the way, and therefore the frame can be discarded. It's better to throw away the whole frame than have a frame that has bad information in. Now, as it happens, PPP has a bunch of other features as well, which are useful in broadband access networks. So, for example, there are sub-protocols, one's called LCP, where the two ends of a PPP link can agree the parameters for that link. Um, there's authentication, so the users can be required to log in, provide a, a username and password before they gain access. And there are facilities for negotiating layer three settings, which basically means assigning an ISP can assign an IP address to the end user. But these are just extra features that are part of PPP. The fundamental thing is it, it's a layer two protocol. It divides up into frames. Now let's have a look at another one. This is Ethernet, very, very important and very common. So an Ethernet frame looks like this. It starts with a preamble. It has a header. And in the header, we have a destination MAC address and a source MAC address. Now these are the media access control addresses that identify each Ethernet device. A MAC address is a 48-bit number and it's programmed into the network card by the manufacturer. So in principle, all network cards in the world should have unique MAC addresses. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes vendors don't do it properly, but most of the time this is, this is true. So in the header, you have a source and destination MAC address, and you have uh, also a protocol field that identifies what the layer three protocol is. And then you have information and the CRC. So this is, looks very much like the PPP frame, 
The difference is we now have these destination and source MAC addresses. And that's because Ethernet is an access network with multiple devices on the same network, whereas PPP is point to point. There's, there's a device at one end and there's a device at the other end, and those are the only two devices involved in, in PPP. Ethernet also uses this preamble at the start of the uh, frame to do carrier sense and collision detection. So specifically in the old Ethernets with hubs, that period of time was used to detect whether somebody else was transmitting at the same time. So what kind of equipment do we get at layer two? Well, the equipment is called either a switch or a bridge. And those terms mean the same thing. They mean something that works at layer two. Some people will use a switch to mean a physical piece of hardware and a bridge to mean a software switch, but they're doing the same thing. The way that a switch works is it receives an entire layer two frame and then selectively retransmits that frame. So unlike a layer one device, which would receive a bit at a time and send that on, layer two will receive the whole layer two frame and then retransmit it afterwards. As part of its operation, a switch will learn which MAC address belongs to which port or where it can find each MAC address in the network, which port it has to send to get to that device. And in that case, if it knows that a particular MAC address is on a particular port, then it will only resend the frame on that port. There's no need to, to resend it on any of the other ports because that's not where the device you're interested in is. Um, so if it knows that, then it can restrict the sending to one port. If it doesn't know where the MAC address is, then it has to fall back to the same behavior as the hub and send it out through all the ports and just hope that it reaches the destination. Now, there are special frames called broadcast frames in Ethernet. They have a special MAC address that identifies them as a broadcast frame. And in that case, the frame has to be sent out of all ports, just like on a hub. And when a switch is working on a packet, it only looks at the layer two header. It doesn't look at anything inside the rest of the, of the frame. 